Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today we're going over lesson eight, which is intro to SAS functions. Now, if you haven't went through the seven previous lessons, I highly, highly recommend that you go through those. It teaches you how to navigate SAS on demand for academics, which is lesson one, which I'll have a link in the description. And it also goes over things like libraries, lib name statements, how to actually type in raw data because we are gonna be utilizing some raw data as examples in this lesson and things of that nature. So please go look at the playlist for SAS for Beginners and look at those previous videos. But today we're going to just do a brief intro to SAS functions. There are tons and tons and tons of SAS functions. This is just going to highlight some superficial information about SAS functions so that you can get started and utilize them in your code to make your code more efficient. So the syntax for SAS function, all SAS functions have parentheses, whether or not they have arguments, they're always, always, always gonna have parentheses, right? And the arguments are gonna be separated by commas. The arguments can either be names of variables, they can be constant values like 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, or they can be characters enclosed by strings. Some general function areas are character functions, date and time functions, mathematical functions, et cetera, et cetera. There's tons of different functions. And that brings me to the SAS documentation of functions. So I'm gonna have the link to, the, to this in the description below, but this tells you tons of the different categories of SAS functions. And it also gives you tons of documentation on each of these functions, okay? So there is a cat X function that we're gonna utilize today. And that's gonna remove leading and trailing blanks. And it's going to concatenate two characters, okay? There's tons and tons, as you can see, different functions that you can use. So you're going to get used to using a set of functions in your career, and you're going to know those set of functions in and out. It all depends on what you're doing. Functions, if you're doing data cleaning, you're going to be using a lot of the data cleaning functions. If you're doing more stats, you're going to be using some more of the mathematical and descriptive statistics functions. So it just all depends on what you go into. So for examples, we're gonna go through some date and time functions. So the first function that we're going to focus on is gonna be this MDY function. And this is very, very important if you're reading in data and they have that month, day, and year as columns and you just need one column as the date, right? So in this case, I'm creating a new data set called patient dates two. I am dropping the columns that I do not need. This drop is going to come last. Okay, so it's going to do all of these statements and then it's gonna come back, uh, back up and drop the variables in format. I'm reading this from a data set called patient dates and I'm just assigning a new variable called full date to the function of MDY, which takes in the month, day, and year, which are variable names. So let's see how this looks in SAS Studio. So this is example one. I just created some raw data using data lines. Once again, if you do not know how to create raw data directly into the interface in SAS, I have a link in the description about raw data. And so now I'm going to create a new data set. So I'm going to create data and I'm going to do patient underscore dates too, just like in the PowerPoint. I'm going to read from the set that I want to look at, which is the one that we created above, which is patient underscore dates. And then from here, I want to do the full date equals to the function MDY. And you'll notice that functions in SAS on demand for academics turns blue. Okay, so I know that that is a built-in function. And then I'm going to type in month, day, year, because those are the three names of the columns that I made in the previous step, okay? So I created a month, day, year, numerical columns, okay? Let me go ahead and change last name to character. And then I'm going to run this, okay? So let's run the first patient dates first. And I run this and I get first name, last name, month, day, year, great. Okay, then I'm going to run this. 
where we actually have a full date column. And I see that this full date is just an integer. It doesn't look like a date to me. So in previous lessons, we talked about that format statement. So if I want to use a format, right, I can call full underscore date and I can type month, month, day, day, year, year, 10 with a dot at the end. And that format is gonna turn teal and that's actually going to format the date. So it actually looks like a date to us, okay? So then when I run this, I see full date and I see that it actually looks like a date now that I can read. And then I can also choose to go ahead and drop the columns that I don't want just to save up space. So I'm gonna drop month day, year, and then now I should only have first name, last name, full date, okay? So first name, last name, full date. I can also move the full date at the end of this data set by using the retain statement. So I'm just gonna say retain, and I'm going to say first name, last name, full underscore date, and then I'm going to run that. And then as you can see, the date went at the end, okay? So that was some data cleaning that we done along with utilizing a SAS function, but pretty much the MDY function takes in the month, date, and year variables to create a full date. We formatted the date using a date informat. If you want to know more information about informats, that will also be linked in the description. We drop the columns that we no longer need, and then we change the order of the columns in the data set. Okay, so just a little bit of data cleaning going on there. So let's go to our next example. Since we've already done a date time function, let's do a mathematical one. So a mathematical function that we're gonna do is mean, okay? There's also a procedure called proc means, okay? So this also can be done in a procedure step, but that proc means is gonna give you tons of descriptive statistics, not just the mean alone. So we're just going to add a column of the mean to a data set. So when we go back to SAS Studio, we're on example two now. So let's look at example two. Once again, I created two lines of fake data, just as an example. It has a student ID, which is a character variable. And then it has three numeric variables that are the individual test score. So I'm going to write data test underscore scores, because I'm just going to overwrite the same data set that we created above. So remember, your old data set goes into the set statement. And then I'm just going to say mean underscore scores is going to equal to the mean of score one, score two, and score three. And then I'm going to run it. So let's run these two lines. And then my output data set has a mean added to it, okay? And maybe I just wanna quickly just grab this for students and just see the mean of their test scores and see where I need to intervene. So that's how you would use a mathematical function, the same as a date time function that it takes in however many arguments with the comma separated, right? Because I could have more than one score. In month, day, year, I need three arguments, okay? But for mean, I can have as many arguments as I want. So just a quick reminder here, notice that I assigned the functions back to variable names. So I create a new variable called mean underscore scores, and then I assign that to the mean function itself. So it's always good to assign certain functions back to the variable. All right. So another widely used group of functions are our concatenation functions, okay? It's when we want to combine two or more columns, two or more characters together. And so this is the documentation for all the different cat functions. So cat itself is going to combine two character strings and leave all of your blanks. Cat s is going to com combine two character strings and strip your blanks. And cat X is going to concatenate two character strings, stripping the blanks and also put a separator between those two 
string. So as you can see for cat X, we have what the separator needs to be in single quotes, and then we have the multiple arguments after that. So an example is gonna come from one of the SAS data sets that, are, that is already built into SAS that everyone has access to if they're using SAS on demand for academics or even base SAS. It is the cars data set. So we're just gonna use the cat X function which is gonna take how we want to separate the two characters. So we're gonna separate make and model by this comma, and we want to have make and model as the arguments. So when we go back to SAS Studio, down here in example three, we look in our library, we expand my libraries on the left-hand side, we expand SAS help, and we see that there is cars. So if we double click on cars data, just to look at it, we see there's a make and model column and we wanna combine these two character columns. I know that they're characters because over in the left-hand side, they have an A and also because they're indented to the left, okay? So any column in SAS that's indented to the left is being read as a character variable because numbers can be changed to characters, right? So we wanna make sure they're two character strings so we want to separate these two character strings with this comma by using the cat X function. And it should be stored in a new variable in our data set called make underscore model. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's scroll all the way to the bottom or to the right. And we see that make underscore model is actually separated by this comma and is combining both of those together. So like I mentioned, that is a brief intro to SAS functions. There are tons and tons and tons of SAS functions, right? You will use some of the same ones over and over and over again, and that will get you more used to utilizing SAS functions. I highly recommend that you try to go and type some of these examples or make up new examples into SAS On Demand for Academics. Look at the documentation that I'm gonna link in the description to try out new functions that you want to try out. But functions are a great efficient way in getting your code, right? So that you don't have to type in more than one line. So thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Please like, comment, and subscribe and go check out my other SAS videos as well as the sequel ones. Thank you and have a great day.